Imagine having a personal assistant with the knowledge of 100 experts that you can access in a matter of seconds. It gives more accurate results than Google search and similar to a regular assistant, the more it works on the job, the better it gets. A couple years ago, that would have sounded pretty unrealistic, but with the rise of AI, it's completely possible today. In this video, I'm going to talk about how AI can save you time, not only in your work life, but also in your personal life. Hi, I'm Adam, a no-code and AI enthusiast. I'm also the co-founder of a software development agency, so I've been using AI in my personal life and work life pretty much every day for the past two years. In this video, I'm gonna share the tips and tricks that I've learned to help you work smarter and not harder. Before I crack on to this video, I wanna let everybody know that you need absolutely no technological experience to understand what we're going to talk about in this video. If you are someone that's a little bit extra curious on AI and how it works, and you wanna go into a bit more depth on APIs and technical stuff like that, I'll have separate videos on my channel, which you can watch to learn a little bit more. Back to the point of the video. If you're writing or reading lots of reports, PDF documents, you might be dealing with CSVs with large amounts of data, or you might just be Google searching all sorts of random things all day and having to navigate through blogs and weird websites to get the information that you want. Or maybe in your personal life, you want some tips with shopping, maybe some tips on travel and which are the best places to go and locations, or maybe even advice or fun ideas on recipes that you could cook for dinner tonight. Traditionally, you'd have to search these things on Google and navigate through a bunch of different websites to find the information that you want. With AI, you can get the results for these in a matter of seconds, simply by typing your exact question and getting a customized response that almost feels like you're talking to an actual person. I've been using AI in a number of different ways pretty much since the day it came out, just because I'm so involved in tech. But I talk to a lot of my friends, even when I'm out and about in their jobs, and they complain about boring, repetitive tasks that sets a light bulb off in my head straight away. There's a lot of these tasks at your work particularly, but also in your personal life, that if you understood how to use AI, you could be saving countless hours. As a business, APG Software Solutions uses AI to help in a range of different things. For example, we've got an assistant that helps us generate keyword specific descriptions for the YouTube videos that we upload. On a personal level, I just recently used AI to help plan the cheapest airports in Europe that I could fly into instead of me having to do Google research. On a business level, these automations can help save time and money. We've integrated hundreds of these solutions for different clients that we work for. On a personal level, these processes can just help you save stress and help you get answers to the questions that you have quicker. Now, when you first load into the screen, which is the ChatGPT landing page, so you'll go to chatgpt.com to get here, it'll probably ask you whether you wanna to subscribe to the premium plan or just stay on the free plan. Now, there's not too much difference here, so honestly, I just recommend starting off on the free plan, but the premium plan uses a slightly better model to generate its answers. Now, on the page here, we have the starting screen we'll be talking about, which is simply the chat interface. So what you can do here is ask any questions that you'd usually typically type into Google, but feel free to get more specific because this thing is a lot more user friendly than Google is. So for example, I'm gonna ask it to translate a sentence from English to Spanish. So I'll be like, hi, my name is Adam. I am a software engineer and I like to play football. And let's ask to translate this into any language. Okay. Let's say Spanish, French and Russian. And let's see what we get. Now, as you can see, this is a lot quicker than if you'd gone to somewhere like Google Translate to do this. And we can ask all these kinds of questions in the exact same chat interface. Now let's ask it another really weird and wonderful question that would be pretty hard to find on Google. Let's ask for the most expensive restaurant in Sydney to test another type of question. As you can see here, it can scan the web and get the responses. So what it will do is actually do that web search, which usually you would do yourself. It'll scan a bunch of websites and then give you the response that it finds across those different sites. So here we found the Ario restaurant, which is in Macquarie Street. You can also see here, it gives you the sources to that information. So you can go and actually view them on the site if you want to. If you just wanna use ChatGPT as a basic place where you can go and ask all of those questions that you have during your work and personal life, then really this is pretty much all you need to know. But if you wanna go a step further and train an assistant, for example, a marketing assistant to help you generate content for your business maybe, then I'm gonna talk about how you can do that. So what you would do is come across to MyGPTs, which is what ChatGPT calls these trained assistants. So ChatGPT refers to them as your GPTs or a GPT. 
So what you'll do is you'll come across to my GPTs and here is where you can create a GPT. Now what I'm gonna do is create a basic GPT that provides me random recipes for a keto diet. So what I'll do is you can either configure this by including the name, description, and assistant instructions yourself. But what I'm going to do is actually create one because that's even easier. So here it asks us, what would we like to make? I would like to make an assistant that helps recommend fun and healthy meals for me that are a part of a keto diet. And what it does here is you can see it's updating the GPT, which is actually writing and filling this field out for you. So here it goes, what would you like to name? Yep, that sounds good. So the GPT is gonna be called the Keto Meal Guru. It's gonna give us a random profile picture. That, re that isn't really very important. Cool, so it says, what specific features or focus areas do you want it to emphasize? So I wanted to really specifically explain each element of the meal and to make sure that it aligns with that diet type. So it goes, goes next, interact, formal, casual, friendly, or something else, let's say friendly. And I think that's everything for now. Let's say, if possible, can you try generate an image of the meal along with the recipe when you provide it? So let's see if the GPT can actually generate an example image of the meal along with the recipe. Cool, so as you can see, it's filled out this form for us. It's called it the Keto Meal Guru, which is what it will show up as in your list of GPTs. Its description is it recommends fun and healthy keto diet meals, and you can read these details instructions, which is actually what the assistant will be doing. Now, a step further is you can upload files. So let's say you had a PDF document that had a long list of 200 recipes that are a part of the keto diet. You could upload that file, and the GPT will actually use that and refer to it when it provides its responses. But let's test this and see what we can get. So let's say, hi, could you please recommend me a meal for tonight's dinner? Let's see how accurate this, this is. <coughs> Keto chicken Alfredo with zoodles. <coughs> so here we can see the ingredients, we can see the instructions, and we're actually gonna get an image. Now, I'm not sure how accurate this image is actually going to be. Wow, let's look at that. So you can see here, this can be really helpful in your personal life. You could have ones maybe for planning holidays or trips. You could have ones for all different types of use cases. What I'm also going to do is show you one that has a bit more of a business side to it. So I have the Adam Freelancer's YouTube assistant, and this is what I use to generate a lot of the keywords, content ideas, descriptions for the videos, and anything related to my personal brand really. So for example, I can ask it off the bat, Hi, please give me 10 video ideas for my next video. And you'll see it'll give me specific videos relevant to my niche. So here we can see I'm primarily a bubble.io software developer and I also do a lot of videos on freelancing with Upwork. So you can see here, it's used a lot of that information to generate the content ideas. Now let's actually take a look at how this is trained. So here are the instructions. So as you can see, there's, there's a lot of instructions here. But what I've also done is uploaded a lot of PDF documents, not only on my personal brand, but the way I want the long-term video content or the scripts that this assistant helps me with generated. So there's a framework for the way that I generate these scripts and I've uploaded that training file. So the GPT refers to that and it's got more specific results. In addition to that, I've uploaded these CSVs of popular keywords in my niche, which I want the GPT to use when it writes descriptions or gives me title ideas for these videos. So as you can see, if you're at work and you do something that maybe involves reading reports, you could upload a bunch of example reports that you've already analyzed and read and maybe the results that you've written. And then what the GPT will do is next time you provide it a report, you'll give it some instructions on what to do and it'll look at your previous analysis and that will shape the GPT's analysis. So it will sound a little bit more like you're actually reviewing these files. Now, one thing I will say is some of the content generated by these GPTs does sound a little bit computer generated and you can tell it's not a human writing it. So the way I usually work is I use GPT to give me great ideas, write scripts, 
but then I still do my own proofreading and I make changes on top of what it generates. So it's much quicker than me writing it myself, but I think it still needs a little bit of human interaction on top. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about here is the GPT marketplace. So the GPT marketplace is basically a place where people that have trained really good assistants, for example, the keto diet assistant, and they're really good at prompt engineering to create an assistant that gives you really good results, they can actually list that publicly on the GPT marketplace. So if you click this explore GPTs button, you get taken to the GPT marketplace, which has all sorts of weird and wonderful GPTs on it. So for example, here we've got featured, we've got Kayak, which is a popular travel website. We've got Resume, which will probably help you build your resume. All different types of GPTs on here. Now, purely to show how this could assist at work, at APG Software Solutions, we do this thing called wireframing databases out, and we use this custom assistant designed by someone else called Database Design Helper to build this specific type of code which we use to build our apps. So for example, I'm going to ask it, hi, I want to build an app like Airbnb where users can reserve hotels and houses for stays. Can you please give me the database design for this kind of app? Now, if you just ask this question to regular GPT, it would give you a pretty generic answer, but this is a custom GPT that's trained to give you this database design format and also this DBML code. So as you can see, I didn't even ask for DBML code, but the way this custom GPT is set up is it's already programmed to be like, if someone asks for a database design, give them this code. Now what we do is we copy this code, we take it to this test app, which is where we wireframe our databases, we command C and command V, and as you can see, it's already generated this basic database structure. Now this is definitely not 100% correct and it requires tweaking, but you can see how this helps us save time in just setting up the basis of this operation when we create our database designs. Now, if you're someone that does a lot of work with CSVs or all sorts of weird and wonderful things in your job, I can guarantee you, you'll find a GPT in this marketplace that will help you do your job easier. Especially if you're doing things like reading reports, you're interacting with PDF documents in any kind of way, or CSV documents, there's a million GPTs out there that will probably help you get those things done quicker. All right, so in this video, we talked over the three main things that anyone can do in OpenAI. We talked about the chat interface, we talked about training your own assistants, and we talked about using custom built assistants that are public on the marketplace that are specifically designed and prompt engineered for a specific use case. I'm hoping that through this video, you got an understanding of what AI is and how you can use it to not only improve your work life and maybe save yourself a lot of hours on some boring tasks, but also improve your personal life from things like helping with travel, helping with building shopping lists, or maybe even planning your next meal. If you're interested in learning more about OpenAI and how it works a bit more technically, and you might be interested in using OpenAI's API to integrate with how you work or some custom software, I'll definitely be publishing videos on that later down the line in this channel. If you want more tips related to no-code AI or freelancing, definitely check out the channel for other content. Thank you.